Hi folks, um, just a little update on the diesel heaters, um, I, I, I can't show you videos of stripped down stuff because I don't have any to hold the camera, except, uh, sorry the phone, except my hand and I need the two of them to operate doing stuff so I tended to do videos that uh, uh, it's after the job's done and after I've tested it uh, which is probably easier for me than doing it other ways I should probably get some kind of stand for the phone or something like that or get a better camera uh, to do it, so uh, it's something that's on the to-do list to be honest. Uh, this is my spare diesel heater. Um, I was going to actually put it in place of my my one I usually use in here, just as a standby while I service the other one. But I decided to to service the other one today anyway, uh, and just open it all up and give it a clean out because I was beginning to think it's probably suited up. Uh, but uh, surprisingly enough, <laughs> it wasn't suited up at all. There was no suit in it, and I mean nothing. And, and I've been running this, con well I wouldn't say constantly, I ran it all last winter, um, I think I got it in around about October, beginning of no November of last year, and I ran it, and I ran it, and I ran it, uh, mostly on mid-range, um, occasionally high to get the place warmed up, and uh, well I decided to pull it to bits and clean it up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was really, really surprised how clean inside it was. There was nothing in the way of carbon at all. Now, that uh, there's a proviso there, though. Uh, when I removed the uh, combustion tube, um, the inside of it was, was really clean. Uh, you know, I mean, I was surprised how clean it was. Um, but I, I would say up near where the mesh is, for the, the stainless steel mesh and the actual uh, uh, glow plug, there was a little bit carbon in behind the end of the tube where you've got the serrations where the, 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 the fuel and the air mix. So there was a bit of carbon in there. Um, I managed to poke it out and I, got, I wouldn't say I got a lot, but there, there was maybe a quarter of a handful of, of, of a muck. But I wouldn't say it was like soot, it was like bits of rust to be fair, it was kind of reddish. Anyway, I got all that out and I cleaned all the se the, the uh, that section out and so on and so forth, and reassembled it. There's a bit of a fiddle here because the way I've mounted the blooming thing, um, I mean, I had to pull the pipe here out a bit. You can see how it's come out a wee bit out the wall. I had to pull that out a bit, and of course the bends in it as well. There's two bends. There's one here, 90 degree bend there, and there's another 90 degree uh, bend up to the actual output from the exhaust of the burner. So it's a bit fiddly, and then of course the air intake that comes from outside, of course it didn't behave itself either. When you go back in through it's like it usually does. But we managed to get the job done. That's the main thing. Now, again, we're running it with the uh, 28mm pump, uh, well, 0.28mm pump, I, I believe it is, or 0 0.028, I don't know, it's something like that anyway. I'm running with that, and it's mounted vertically, which is really how the pump should always be mounted. Uh, the outlet should always be vertical. That way, the actual pump itself, the piston of the pump, is always always immersed in the, the liquid, rather than the, some of it being uh, in free air, which tends to give you a wee bit of bubbling anyway. So, it's going well. At the moment, uh, it's um, this is a later controller, uh, unfortunately. So, it's telling me it's 24 degrees centigrade in here. It's on alpine mode. Um, which is the most economical, the, 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 uh, the CO reading is about 3 to 4 coming off the exhaust pipe and that's about 4 inches away so that's, uh, that's excellent and the, the, the shed is actually sitting at 26.6 degrees centigrade, nice and warm, uh, I think they're putting my shorts on but I don't want to frighten the neighbours, <laughs> uh, so there we go, so it's, to be quite honest with you, it just proves the fact that running these things on, on kerosene it definitely is giving you a lovely clean burn uh, without any great issues. Um, just that little bit of muck, I, I wouldn't even call it carbon to be fair. Um, it might have been to do with a bit of corrosion in there during uh, the, the months where it's not been on. Um, it wasn't used really from, I would say, it got a tiny bit of use in May uh, virtually, and uh, maybe a tiny, tiny wee bit of use in June. Possibly not even at all, I can't really remember to be honest, but certainly not in July and August uh, and September, it wasn't used at all and then. Uh, so, I don't know. The Funny enough, the bottom of the, the, my tank that I, I get my fuel out of, I've got 20 litre tanks, had some kind of red stuff in it. 
um, which wasn't there before. Now, I don't know whether I was getting contaminated fuel from the, uh, the, the, the garage that I get it from, or whether or not it's some kind of a build-up of uh, bacteria. I don't know. So I'm going to be cleaning out the my, my, my plastic 20-litre tank that I get it in. Uh, I'll be doing it with a uh, traffic film remover initially, and then I'll be doing a bit, a bit of bleach, and then uh, thoroughly rinsing it out with really hot water and letting it dry. So we'll go that way and we'll get fresh fuel for it. Uh, we'll get 40 litres. That should do me for quite a while over the winter time. Uh, I do spend a bit of time out here. Uh, this is my radio amateur shack, uh, and I we have a kind of workshop where I like to do weird jobs and repairs and so on and so forth and things like that that, that, that uh, uh, float my boat. <laughs> um, I've also got a Citroen 2CV engine hiding under there as well, which I'm in the process of finishing off. So, uh, but plenty of different interests here, for the, especially for the Lomax car as well that I have. So, I just thought I'd uh, do this wee update for you guys that... Uh, Running on kerosene definitely gives you a lovely clean uh, machine inside. Um, and it's just a bit of a pity that I had this problem with the, uh, the starting up recently, which I still feel it is the pump. It is leaking through a little bit. So I'm not going to turn the fuel off tonight. And when I uh, start it up tomorrow morning, um, we'll see whether or not we get all this white smoke again. If I don't, I was wrong about the pump. Um, if I do... I, it has to be the pump because it's absolutely spotlessly clean inside. It's a uh, there's like I've already fitted a new glow plug and stainless steel gauze, uh, but it's all been cleaned out in there. It's all thoroughly washed out and so and so for the uh, alcohol isopropyl and everything's clean. So to be honest with you, um, I don't think it's the the, the end to do with the burner tube. I think it's more to do with the pump. But uh, we'll find out in the morning when we try it again. So I just thought I'd do this wee update guys, uh, thanks for watching and uh, if you don't subscribe already please subscribe and use the notification bell so any new new videos come along. I'm hoping that uh, the channel gets a wee bit busier again, it was actually quite busier before when it was vintage and amateur uh, but since I kind of renamed it after because I don't really do the vintage any longer, uh, I renamed it to uh, the, the interest that I have, like so the diesel heater and the, um, some of the stuff that I do, um, other stuff that I do you know. Um, amateur radio and the Lomax I thought well but uh, I noticed the number of views I've got had has dropped so uh, I'm not making any money off this guys <laughs> it's never going to happen so there we are uh, so thanks a lot take care everyone and we'll catch up again with another video uh, whenever I do one cheers now bye